from Edison International Field in Anaheim, California. It's another Supercross sellout. Hello, everyone. Art Ekman along with David Bailey and Marty Reed ready to bring you the action. Our qualifying procedure has the top four riders from each eight-lap qualifying heat advancing to the main event, and the rest of the field then proceeds to the semis where the top five get a transfer to the main. The last two positions in the 20-rider field come from the last chance qualifier, and we're almost set for our first qualifying heat. Our colleague trackside is Marty Reed. We always talk about the start being critical, the whole shot, but here at Anaheim, it is even more important. Take a look over my shoulder. It is 290 feet, almost the length of a football field, down to the first turn. And then you've got to make it into this very narrow opening. These guys are going to be going hard, and then you better have one other thing besides a lot of horsepower. You better have a lot of bravery, because you're going to have to get on the brakes late to make it into that first turn first. David Bailey, as we look at the gate right now, Jeremy McGrath, oh, we're looking right into his eyes. He's very serious. The last time we had two races in one city was in Pontiac, Michigan. In 1993, it was Jeremy's rookie year. He won the second evening in that particular doubleheader. Now, he came in seventh here in our opener, and he's anxious to get out there and win this second one in the city of Anaheim. Hard if practice were any indication, I would just go ahead and put my money on McGrath right now. He went out, established the fastest pace, which jumps were capable of being jumped. Everyone was just pretty much keying off of him. Pichon was fast, Larry Ward was fast, but McGrath looked a little bit better than everyone else so far tonight. You saw Pichon, Larry Ward, the winner in Seattle last week, is also in this field along with Kevin Windham, Jeff Emick, Sebastian Tortelli, Steve Lampson, Greg Albertine, you see their backs there. There's Tortelli, number 44. Heath Voss will be having our helmet cam, and that ought to be interesting as we single in on uh, Heath Voss going over some of these jumps. There are very steep triples here in Anaheim tonight. Well, there's the ham helmet cam. You can see right on the top. Heath Voss is signing sideways for Heat 1. And we're off and running. That's Heath Voss taking off. Break it up a little bit. Let's see who gets the whole shot. Number one, Jeremy McGrath. McGrath coming out of the corner. Tortelli, number 44. And Steve Lampson, number 24. Right there, along with Kevin Windham. Impressive starts from some riders, David Bailey, who haven't shown too well this year. Plus, a pretty good start for our helmet cam, too. Heath Voss right there behind Tortelli for a moment. Kevin Windham up there again. Jeremy McGrath right where he wants to be. McGrath went four for four here in Anaheim before this year's season opener. He got his very first Supercross win here in Anaheim in 1993, his rookie year. And McGrath just did something a little special right there. There's the difference, Tortelli jumping over his teammate. When you come out of that left before the triple, if everything isn't perfect, you best not go for it. Jeremy now starting to pull away from the team Honda rider. Lampson moving into third now, Tortelli in second. Steve Lampson on the 20, number 24, Mazda Chaparral Yamaha. Jeremy McGrath's teammate, Kevin Windham now, and Lampson going at it for third. A moment ago, Kevin was right there behind Jeremy. Now he sits in fourth. Jeremy's gone. been kind of a mystery as to why Kevin hasn't ridden in the races like he does during the week. During the week, he's the man. He's the fastest guy. And in practice, he looks good, too. But in the races, he's just been coming up a little short. Really the mystery of the 99 season, David Bailey. As we see Steve Lampson out in front of him right here. His last podium appearance was a third in 96 here. You can see just a last little shot of Wyndham there, kind of cased that little last loop into the corner. Just his timing isn't perfect. He needs to be perfect out here to be able to keep the pace with McGrath and Lust. McGrath is our leader. We'll be right back. The checkers will fly here in our first qualifying heat when we return. Would you look at this? The Suzuki is off to a great start. And all of Daytona is on their feet as the TSXR screams to the child. The Suzuki's are dicing from the on the inside of turn 11. He wants a piece of him. He's got a... Ah, did you see that? Outstanding. The rest of the field might as well head home. The TS 1000 are slicing for the exit. Oh, my. Suzuki's V-twin is developing incredible horsepower as it thunders up the hill away from the... Remarkable. The GSX-R600 750 AMA Super Sport National Champions. Everybody I know calls her the cow, even people I don't know. Oh! I threw a parade for the cow because it definitely needed something to honor this moment. 300,000! It's really 
saying something to think that we went through 15 New England winters. It's just an amazing vehicle. It's been a, a really good buddy. It's been a good friend. And heck, we just need another excuse for a party. Toyota trucks. How many miles can you put on? Do you need a Visa credit card? If you can say yes to these minimum requirements, we'll say yes to you. This is a special opportunity to get an unsecured Visa credit card with no security deposit required, even if you've been turned on before and regardless of your past credit history. Almost everyone will be approved for this Visa credit card, so call now. Repeat, if you can say yes to these minimum requirements, we'll say yes to you. Say yes to this limited no-risk offer for an unsecured Visa credit card from Cross Country Bank. Call this toll-free number now. If you added up all the hours you've spent boring out cylinders, building strokers, and setting up suspension, you'd have graduated from MMI by now, and you'd be getting paid for doing what you love. Call 1-800-994-3664 to find out how you can become one of the best technicians in the world. Motorcycle Mechanics Institute. Supercross is brought to you by Suzuki. Right now, your Suzuki dealer has a wide selection of fine motorcycles and ATVs and the financing to get them. And by Honda Motorcycles. Cruise in and get great financing on Honda Customs. Welcome back to Edison International Field in Anaheim, California. Our first qualifying heat is underway. And here is Heath Bosch, number 28, trying to pick up on Kevin Windham, number 14 of Team Honda way out in front is Jeremy McGrath McGrath now with a six second lead in first place. Oh, this is the section right here where he's making up a lot of time where Kevin just kind of jumped down into that valley and McGrath jumps the whole thing. Tortelli has a problem. Tortelli was passed by both Lampson and Wyndham. And now Heath Voss also. Let's get out of Marty Reed. Well, guys, you were talking about Kevin Windham earlier. I talked to him right before the race. I said, oh, how are the effects of the flu? He says, oh, I'm better than I was. I said, what do you think, 75%? He says, oh, I'm not sure I'm that good. But so far, he's riding pretty well here. Kevin Windham led two laps in Seattle. And that is all he has led this year, which has been very disappointing to him. He almost put too much pressure on himself, David Bailey. Well, and, and I'm, I'm putting a little extra on him right now, too. And I'd kind of forgotten that he was feeling so bad. He's probably just thinking, you know, if I can get in the main, I don't care if it's fourth, just get me there so I can rest. About five laps to go for Jeremy McGrath here in the opening qualifying round. As we take a look still at the battle with Kevin Windham. He won a 125 race here in 1996. He's always liked the Anaheim track. Gets a nice run from that outside. His best race of the year so far in 99 was the opener when he took a fourth place. He started in seventh and moved up to finish fourth. A lot of riders in this qualifier looked like they could be going to the semi, including Albertine, Tortelli, Emig, and Pichon. A nine-second lead for Jeremy McGrath over his teammate Steve Lampson. Ward just slid Larry out. Larry Ward slid out, yes. He's right behind Pichon and slid out, going out, coming out of the corner up to the finish line jump. So, you can see, looks like unless some sort of a miracle happens, he'll be going to the semi as well. Remember, only the top four make it to the main event. Right now, that is Jeremy McGrath, Steve Lampson. Beautiful line right there by Lampson. Problem is, if you go out and jump that, it's, it's faster if you're by yourself, but you can get cut off the way Wyndham just cut him off. Didn't allow him to do the triple. Kevin Wyndham, number 14, getting in front of Steve Lampson now. So it's McGrath, Wyndham, Lampson, and Boss in line to get the transfer to the main event. Now Albertine has moved in front of Boss. And McGrath has got a nine-second lead now as you take a look at the leaderboard. McGrath, Wyndham, Lampson, and Albertine, the top four, with Voss now moving back to fifth. There's McGrath going the other way. You can keep an eye on these guys. Jeff Emig and Pichon trailing Voss in that lineup. Destined for the semifinals as we see three laps to go. I talked with DeCoster after practice, and he seemed to think this would be 
pretty good night for Albertine. Looked good out there. He was jumping everything. Even though it was a, it's a pretty busy track, really technical, he's riding aggressive. Albie looking for a breakthrough as well. Albert Jane with a 16th, a 20th, a 12th, and a fifth place finish in Seattle. A big improvement, Marty Reed. You're right, guys. In fact, when we were here at Anaheim first time, remember it was Albertine who was knocked down with the flu. And it's, he says this is really, since Seattle, the first two races where he has been 100%. Less than two laps to go in our opening qualifying heat, and Jeremy McGrath has just stolen the crowd. This is the section where he was making up a lot of his time. He can't do it now because of the lapsed rider. But getting out of this, look at that run to the triple. He's only got about 30 feet to get up all that speed. A great shot, too. You can see how high they go and how bumpy it gets down near that track. Jeremy McGrath with the American flag flying from his helmet. Remember when he had taillights in his helmet that one year here in Anaheim? Well, he and Troy Lee always get together and make it special here for this event. This is a new one. It looks pretty cool. At first, I thought, well, I don't know about that, but I thought maybe he's just going to use it for practice, but it's starting to grow on me. Kind of reminds you to take you back to the old Mickey Thompson days when uh, the top qualifier put a put a, uh, a banner on top of his helmet so you could see him coming up through the field. They got points for passing people at that time. We're on our final lap now for Jeremy McGrath in this first qualifying heat of the evening from Anaheim. McGrath is riding around those big berms, feet on the pegs, great balance. Of course, Jeremy McGrath having trouble his uh, first time here at Anaheim with the opener. He got tangled up with uh, RC, Ricky Carmichael, and went from 11th on lap 8 to 7th to finish 7th in the race. And he just threw out a knack-knack on the triple a moment ago just to get the crowd a little bit into it. Just comes across another one spreading the legs as the checkers fly for Jeremy McGrath so for Jeremy now that is his third heat win of the year Jeremy with one win trails LaRocco in the points by only three points and is looking to catch up we'll take a look at the official finishing list as well as those riders who will have to go to the semifinal when we return Never before has Loudon seen townhomes like this. The second you walk into a townhome and colonnade at the Dallas Town Center, you'll notice how spacious it is. Oak Hill Properties has truly created luxurious living. The extras have become standards from brick fronts and walkout basements to cathedral ceilings and three finished levels. And now your family can move in within 30 days. Colonnade in the center of it all couldn't make living more convenient with easy access to main roads, shopping centers, and theaters. Colonnade at the Dallas Town Center, presented by Oak Hill Properties, an equal housing opportunity. At Novak, we're committed to keeping the power on. January 15th, when the worst ice storm in recent history hit, Novak was first in the region to have service completely restored. During Christmas weekend, when other Virginia electric companies needed help, Novak crews were quick to respond. They took their time to come down here and help us instead of being at home with Christmas, with their children for Christmas. Commitment when it's needed most. Isn't that what you expect from your power provider? Novak, proven power. Let Bob Jenkins, Ned Jarrett, Benny Parsons, Bill Weber, and Jerry Punch take you behind the scenes at Daytona. Tune in all weekend to ESPN, ESPN2, and ESPN News for all the flashes. And log on to ESPN.com for even more hot news. For analysis, interviews, and insight leading up to the start of NASCAR's 1999 Winston Cup season, keep your eyes peeled right here, where there's enough NASCAR action to fill the tank of any racing fan. These are the four riders that will make it directly to the main event after our first qualifying round. Jeremy McGrath, Kevin Windham, Steve Lampson, and Greg Albertine, which means last week's winner, Larry Ward, Jeff Emig, Voss, Tortelli, and Pichon have to go to the semifinal round. Let's go down to the winner's podium right now. Marty? A very comfortable ride for Jeremy McGrath. Whole shot, and you just pulled away. The largest lead was about 11 seconds by my clock. Yeah, I felt really good out there. I, my Chaparral Mazda Yamaha's come out of the gate really good. Didn't quite have the first turn locked until I got down, though. Those guys hit the brakes. I came on a little bit longer and got the whole shot. I was pretty pumped about that. Let's talk about the main now. Will you change anything on the setup? I mean, it looked like you got a dial. No, my bike's working excellent. I just want another start like that. And, Ride a few laps like that, get away, and ride my own race. See, 
in the main. All right, thanks. As far as age is concerned, everyone mentions John Dow being 33 years of age, but in this years of in years of service as a professional in the sport, it's Mike LaRocco and Larry Ward uh, starting all the way back in 1988. LaRocco now is off to his best start ever, and he's the subject of this week's Honda Close-Up. Definitely uh, been consistent, which uh, has actually put me on top of the points. And I mean, I know it's early, but. Uh, that, I think, is the key to uh, at least being there at the end. Mike LaRocco's consistency has been like a sign from heaven. After ineffective and injury-riddled years, Mike took the factory connection deal last season riding for almost nothing, just to prove to himself and others he could still do it. And I wanted to make sure that, you know, it was, I was done before I actually stepped away from racing. And uh, I, at that point, I don't think I could uh, hang things up and feel good about it. So. You know, I did it whatever it took for me to race last year, and, uh, you know, I, I kind of got stepped into this ride this year, and, and things are starting to get better, so I know, you know, hopefully that I made the right decision. LaRocco knows what it's like being a champion. Title contending wins started coming in 1992 on a 125, and then the last 500cc title in the record books was his, leading to the 250 national crown in 94. I mean, once you get going, and I'm hoping that's what happens in this series, uh, you know, I started winning races then, and, and I carried it on, and I think just like many riders have, you, you get that confidence and uh, you get on a roll. Mike LaRocco might be riding for an independent team, Jack in the Box Factory Connection, but make no mistake about it. It's got Team Honda's backing. We were getting the factory support, and we wouldn't be there, you know, without the support of the factory. And we were riding good bikes, and I think, uh, you know, we're able to run our own program, which may help or make us feel better about things. But, uh, you know, apparently it's working well. Points leader Mike LaRocco, this week's Honda Close-Up. Marty, the Suzuki's are trying something new tonight. You're right, Art. Number 17, Robbie Rayner, you're getting a shot of his uh, carburetor down here on the line. They have gone to a brand new setup in the carburetor. Not revolutionary, but evolutionary. And obviously, Greg Albertine seemed to like it. He advanced into the main by finishing fourth in the heat race number one. We'll find out if Robbie can do the same here in heat number two. 30-second board is up for a second qualifying heat of the evening here in Anaheim, California. Mike LaRocco, Ezra Les, John Dow, David Billiman. David Huffman, Tim Ferry, the leading privateer in the field so far this year. Robbie Rayner, Jimmy Button, Phil Lawrence, Pedro Gonzalez, Lance Smale out of four-stroke fame from Federal Way, Washington. There's Robbie Rayner as we look right into his uh, goggles. Grayson Goodman, a popular rider in these parts, is also in this second qualifying heat, and they're off and running. Which four riders will get the transfer to the main? 17 is Robbie Raynard, and getting hung up is Ezra Lust. You can see the front wheel of Huffman's bike is completely stuck in the back wheel right there of Ezra Lust. Had a tough time getting going. Button's also just now getting going. It'll be a little bit harder for him to get his bike started. Robbie Raynard and Pedro Gonzalez. Raynard just came into that corner from the far inside, left it on a little longer, and he just moseyed his way right in there and just to give anybody else any room. And right behind them, Mike LaRocco. So down was Lost Button Huffman in the first corner. What a bad break. Likely to head to the semifinal round if they can't catch up in less than eight laps. Robbie Raynard, though, looking very quick. Look at LaRocco just muscle his way through that whoop section, touching the tops. A little different rhythm through there. LaRocco, our points leader is taking on number 53, Pedro Gonzalez. Pedro, the former runner-up in the 125 West several years ago after winning a Mexican championship. LaRocco just trying to find the right way around him. Well, he, he thought he had a line to the inside, and Gonzalez moved all the way over. He had to actually back off a little bit, get back over, and get some more hey, racetrack. LaRocco to the inside, and he passes Pedro Gonzalez into second place. This mechanic telling him, keep going, get Raynard. Raynard's already starting to open up a little lead. So right now it is Raynard, Jeremy McGrath, Gonzalez, and John Dowd has moved up. He's in back of uh, Gonzalez right now. There's Gonzalez, number 53, and John Dowd, who got his first podium of the year last week in Seattle, a third place finish. Everyone going to the inside in the corner before the finish jump there. Six laps to go in our second qualifying heat. The checkers will be flying when we come back. 
Out of the shadows come three incredible motorcycles. Each one takes the look of a custom to a beautiful new place. The Honda Shadow Spirit 1100, the Shadow Ace Tourer, and the Shadow American Classic Edition. It's always cooler in the shadows. During custom finance days, get 9.9 .9 APR on new Shadow 1100s. Hey. I never want to see you again. <laughs> Wait, where are you going? Aren't you bummed? She took my favorite jersey. The 1999 ESPY Awards with host Samuel L. Jackson. Performances by Big Bad Voodoo Daddy and Fastball. It's the greatest night in sports. The 1999 ESPY Awards, live Monday at 7.30 on ESPN. A presentation from ESPN Classic. They fought in the shadows. Boxers you never heard of and heroes you'll never forget. Shadow Boxing, the journey of the African-American fighter. February 19th at 8 p.m. right here on ESPN2. In this Honda flashback, we go back to 1989, the opener at Anaheim. Number 10, Guy Cooper, beat the field into turn one and got the whole shot. However, the real action happened at the first double jump. Watch the left portion of your screen as number one, Rick Johnson, got loose and bumped number 111, John Michelle Bale. The Frenchman Bale found the hay bales and just how tough it would be racing stateside. Number 10, Guy Cooper had problems of his own as this slip up of the whoops allowed number 20, Johnny O'Mara, to move into position and shortly thereafter seize control of first. Following the O Show would be Rick Johnson, a defending champion, makes the pass on Guy Cooper, moving into second place. Johnny O'Mara's luck would run out as he cased a landing, causing mechanical problems. The wounded O'Mara was a sitting duck for Johnson. O'Mara, the DNF. The defending champion Sky to the first win of 1989. The Red Riders wrapped up a great race when Jeff Stanton and Guy Cooper rounded out the podium for a Honda sweep. In our second qualifying heat with six laps to go, Robbie Raynard is our leader. Now what a pass by Dowd right there. Just went around the outside of Gonzalez. It didn't look like he had any room. It looked like he had to even duck his elbow a little bit just to miss the handlebar, but he made it stick. Number 20 is Tim Ferry. He will be the next one to assault Pedro Gonzalez. And out in front with a comfortable lead. It'll be five laps to go when Robbie Rayner cuts across the finish line jump. He just did. This corner right here, everybody was going wide in practice because they were tripling into it. Now everyone's trying to protect their line. They're getting a nice firm there. Only four riders qualify for the main event. David Villeman is now in sixth, moving up as Tim Ferry looking to make a pass into fourth. Pedro Gonzalez holding on pretty well. Well, he left the door open right there, though, again. This is a tough set. Uh-oh. Ferry goes sideways, and so does John Dowd on the corner. But they hold their positions now. Number 53 is Gonzalez. There Here comes David Villeman. Villeman leaps over Gonzalez. There was a tough box out in the track, and right as Gonzalez got a little squirrely through those whoops, he saw that, tried to change his line. That's where we're going to see a lot of passing tonight, Art, that loop section. This one here, everyone seems to be using the same timing. They, they go three, two through the middle, and three out. I haven't seen anybody do it different. Philemon using some body English to make that bike stick right where he wants it. Look how far forward he gets over the bike. He got an atrocious start in the last main here in Anaheim, starting at 18th and ended up in 13th. And a fourth uh, was his best finish in Anaheim on the 125s in 1996. Let's check in with Marty Reed, trackside. Well, a big night for David Villeman. Uh, one of the points we need to make is this is his last race here in the States before he goes back overseas. He's in fifth right now, wants to do well, would love to take home a victory back to Europe. He has to uh, take care of his contract with Yamaha France, returning to compete in the 250 GPs. 
in that worldwide circuit, but he has announced to us, of course, that he is returning for a full season next year. He also wants to vacation here as we see our leader, number 17, Robbie Raynard, with three laps to go. He has just lost a little bit of time to LaRocco, but not enough for him to really worry about losing this heat race, unless he has a major problem in the last couple of laps. Ferry still staying within striking distance of doubt. You see that inside rut right there? It sets up that group section right there for a completely different timing. The guys that go wide jump in. Ferry's a pretty good story. He's been the top privateer in every main event except one this year. And he's the uh, highest in points of any privateer. Of course, Nolene Yamaha helps with his expenses. That's the section where those guys are losing time. Approaching the triple right there, the front runners are jumping all the way into the corner. They're getting a good rut inside on that corner. Robbie Rayner now with two laps to go. He has a three-second lead on Mike LaRocco, our points leader, coming into this race. And then a big gap with John Dow, Tim Ferry, and David Villeman Dow to fifth in the last race here at Anaheim and that season opener trying to hold off the onrush of Tim Ferry. That's giving David Villeman a good opportunity. Here comes Villeman right up on the backside as he goes wide all of a sudden. He goes wide to get a run at that triple. He'll go wide here and watch him through the whoop. So wheelie in. He'll go three. Three out. It's a little faster, but he just doesn't have anywhere to go to make the pass. He's smart, though. He's not following. Tyson Cady went down. That's what the crowd was oozing, ooing and aahing about as the white flag comes out. They're going to approach Our him. Final out. There he is right there. John Dow, number six. Tim Ferry behind him. David Villeman behind him. Looks like Villeman lost a little bit of time that lap. Villeman just getting used to the 250s, really. He outgrew the 125s and went prematurely into the 250 ranks, many thought. Had a great ride in San Diego. Boy, did he ever. Getting out to that hole shot. He led it for a long time. Stayed up there. Even when he got past to the lead, both by Raynard and Lusk, he was able to pass him back. Led right now, LaRocco like is... Going the other way, LaRocco is all over Raynard. The white flag lap. Mike LaRocco wants to win this heat. Number 17 gets the checkered flag right in front of Mike LaRocco, so Robbie Raynard hauls it in. That is the second heat win for Robbie Raynard on the year. He also won a heat back in Phoenix and took his best result, final result of the season at Phoenix, a fourth place finish for Robbie Raynard. Headed for that winner's podium when we return. Suzuki Fest 99, folks, step right up. Pick a selected Suzuki sport bike and pick out $400 in free accessories. How about you, son, a Suzuki Katana 600 and a helmet? Or maybe a Bandit 1200 and a new leather jacket? It's up to you. There's lots to choose from. And choose from financing offers like zero down, low monthly payments, or low APR. But hurry in. Suzuki Fest 99 and soon. Hey, hey, don't need to get nasty. Suzuki Fest 99, folks. Golf Digest presents 50 ways to lower your score. To get greater distance, turn your right foot out. For a better backswing, don't slide. Turn your hips instead. Now, lower your score, drive longer, hit straighter, and play your best golf ever with the 50 new stroke-saving tips in every Golf Digest. Call now for your risk-free trial issue. If you like it, get 11 more issues, 12 in all, for just $19.97. Plus, get this stroke-saving video free. Call 800-417-1200. Well, let's see what we've got. I've got Goofy, I've got Donald Duck, and I've got Minnie. You got, you have Mickey in there? Mickey? Let's see. The last one. Good, good. I like Mickey. Back in Anaheim, Art Ekman and David Bailey. Now let's check out what happened at the start of that very important second qualifying Well, Raynard all the way on the right, right here. As he comes into the corner, he has to stay and keep from hitting the hay bale, so he pushes into to, uh, Damon Huffman right here, hits Lusk's back tire. That's where it, all the problems start. See the front wheel getting stuck right there in the back of Lusk's bike? That forces him to stop. Otherwise, Lusk had a great start. Lusk button, Huffman involved in that first corner crash, and it opened things up for Robbie Raynard. Let's go down to Marty Reed. 
In fact, guys, while you were uh, showing the replay, I asked Robbie, were you aware of it? And you said you actually did feel some contact from behind. Yeah, I went in the first turn pretty aggressive. You know, I was kind of moving a couple people out of the way, and then I hit, got hit from behind and kind of threw my back wheel over the first jump, just like completely sideways. And I just like kind of just held it on and just kept on going, and it came out really well. We mentioned the new carburetor, and uh, I talked to Greg before the race, and he was really pleased with the way testing had gone. He hadn't had a chance to really talk to you. Uh, it, can you feel a difference on the bike? Yeah, you know, Suzuki's been working really hard, you know. The bike's really good, you know. You can see, like, you know, I pull good starts. You know, the whole team pulls really good starts. You know, so, you know, that's a lot of horsepower that Suzuki's pulling the good starts every time, you know. I feel really good on it. You know, I just got to kind of, you know, pit both together, the start and the moto. You gave it a good ride in the heat. We'll see you in the main. Thanks a lot. So Robbie Raynard, Mike LaRocco, John Dowd, and Tim Ferry advance to the main event after our second qualifying heat is over with. It's best to get your tickets early for the remainder of the season. There are some disappointed folks this year, unable not only to get good tickets, but also get in the building like here in Anaheim. Take a look at the schedule now. The 125 East gets going as we head south to Tampa. Then it's Atlanta, Texas Stadium before Bike Week in Daytona. On to the second round of the Triple Crowd in Houston, as this is the first round, incidentally. We go to Minneapolis, on to St. Louis and Pontiac. It's the Superdome on the 17th of April. Before the final round of the Triple Crowd in Indianapolis, we wrap things up as usual in Las Vegas on May Day. The semis are just around the corner. David Bailey's thoughts coming up next. It's the most powerful custom on the planet. Six cylinders. Six carbs. 1,520 cc's. Only one motorcycle in the world can cruise like this. The Valkyrie from Honda. During custom finance days, get 5.9 APR on new Valkyries. The new age of small business has arrived. Opportunity is everywhere. And American Express gives you the power to seize it with the Corporate Optima Platinum Card. A corporate platinum card that lets you pay over time. And it's yours free. Use it to extend payment with a low introductory APR of only 8.9%. It's easy to apply. The Corporate Optima Platinum Card makes it easier to manage your cash flow while providing your business with a substantial credit line of up to $50,000. You'll receive complete monthly expense reports and enjoy savings at FedEx and other businesses, all with no annual fee. Call now and we'll take your application right over the phone. It's your business. So put the experience of American Express Small Business Services to work for you. Call 1-800-861-2184 today and apply for the Corporate Optima Platinum Card. And let American Express give your business the power to do more. But we're in a good spot, okay? Sellout crowd here in Anaheim, California, and our heat racing has set the scene for some great semifinal action as well as an outstanding main event from Anaheim. The second time we've been in Anaheim this year for round number five. Of course, we opened the season here, but an exciting first heat. McGrath taking off and just leaving the field. Pole shot. He said he needs, needed to get a good start and get out, put the put the pack away and ride his own race. And what he did was he went out there and he learned a few things. He, already, he mastered all of the things that he was trying in practice. He got to do it without any traffic, and, man, he had, like, 11-second lead by the time it was all over with. I thought it was very encouraging to see Kevin Windham do so well. It was. You know, he started to drop back at first, and I know he's sick. I, I went over to the Honda truck to, to see how everything was going, talk to his mechanic, and he's got 103 temperature, and anybody that's ever had that knows what it feels like, and try to ride Supercross. It's pretty tough, so under the conditions, he did well. Last week's winner, Larry Ward, and a, and a contender, Mikel Bichon, having to go to the semifinal round out of that first qualifying heat. Well, the uh, first turn pileup made uh, the big effect on the results of the second qualifying. I think, you know, what I would do, with the, looking at this first corner, you come in there so with so much speed and it's so narrow, is I would want to line myself up to the inside. Don't be in the middle or caught on the outside, which is what happened. 
Uh, Huffman came in and he didn't have any room after Raynard came in and sort of shut the door on everybody. Raynard had the inside. He didn't do anything wrong, but he certainly caused a lot of problems for everybody else. Lusk had good position, but got caught up in that melee. And uh, Barocco just kept inching closer and closer. He was really where he wanted to be in that heat. Well, I noticed that he was jumping a section that McGrath was doing, approaching the triple. And, and if he can do that in the main event with a good start, he'll be uh, a little bit of a threat for McGrath. And he was definitely able to put the pressure on Raynard in the last corner, couple of corners. More big names going to the semifinal like Villeman and Huffman coming out of that second one. Let's go down to Marty Reed now and get a little update on uh, some of the conditions now. Well, guys, we went back into the pits and checked on uh, Damon Huffman and Ezra Lusk, the two that went down in that first turn crash in heat number two. Both are okay. Machines, no major damage. Everybody will be ready to go when it comes time for the semis. Taking a look at the history book, Anaheim started out the first four years being the final race of the season. And more interesting, I think, was that the first four winners represented the four different factories. A Honda with Marty Smith in 76, then Hannah on a Yamaha, Mosier on a Kawasaki, and Howerton on a Suzuki. Everyone was well represented in those first four years. We have three different factory teams already posting wins this season, and our semifinals from Anaheim in round number five are coming up next. If you own a European-made automobile, trust it to the specialists at the European Service Center. Over the last 13 years, they've earned an outstanding reputation as knowledgeable, honest technicians for European-made autos. Today's automobiles are increasingly sophisticated, and the European Service Center specializes in repairing those autos made by Jaguar, Mercedes-Benz, BMW, Saab, Volvo, Porsche, and Audi. If you need someone who knows European autos, then you need to bring your car to the European Service Center for personal quality service. Hey, we're back. Templeton, Tyson's Corner. It's the big year-end clearance. Use cars, use trucks. Take a look at this. This is 4x4 heaven. 95 Jeep Grand Cherokee. 18,888. A 98 Tahoe. Again, a 4x4. 28,888. And finally, a 98 Expedition. A 4x4. 28,888. No money down. We'll see you. Templeton, Tyson's Corner. Big Fights Boxing Hour gives you access to the largest boxing library in the world. Sit ringside for the best fights in history by calling 1-800-CLASSIC to get ESPN Classic. Here's what you can check out in this library. Rare footage of classic fighters, hard-hitting fights you can't see anywhere else, and volumes of the greatest action in boxing history. But to see Big Fights Boxing Hour, you've got to get ESPN Classic. Call 1-800-CLASSIC today. We're back in Anaheim, Edison International Field for the semifinal round. The top five making it to the main event out of the semifinal round. And they only go for six laps, that's for sure. As dramatic as the Seattle win was last week for Larry Ward, moving up in the points race has quickly removed any thoughts of celebrating. Yeah, it was uh, definitely an exciting race. Um, it was felt really good to win again and not have such a big gap between wins. Um, but being in Seattle the last race, it was it was super special. Uh, honestly, though, I, I've had to forget about it. Sunday, Saturday night um, was a great night. Sunday even, I, I thought about it some. But Monday morning, I had to forget about it. Um, there's still a lot of races left this year. And now I have a chance again. After the first race, I was completely out of it. And now I'm right back in the thick of things. Larry Ward uh, concerned that he didn't make it right to the main event coming out of his qualifying heat, uh, having to run to the semifinals, David Bailey. Well, it always concerns you to have to go to the semi, but I think Larry's been around long enough and just sort of proved that last week by winning another main event nine years later that he's got the experience and knows that he can go out here in the semi and learn a little bit more about the track, get loosened up. It shouldn't affect him in the main because of the way the starting line is configured. You can be pretty far to the outside and still come away with a whole shot. As we take a look at the track map, David, Bailey a much different configuration for round from round one well you can see there's a lot more corners but the first place you notice a big change is in the starting line that's 300 feet to the first corner but you notice how narrow this is right here we've already seen some problems there the first section I want to look at right here is corner number three heading into the whoop section if we take a look at that you can see that they come off the triple and as they head into this corner the guys are going to be going wide to get a run at that and you can see some block passing right there through the whoops if you can hold that inside line you may be able to make a block pass in the next corner then going over to corner number seven over here as they approach that corner it just depends on what kind of drive you get jeremy has been jumping all the way off the plateau into the corner heading into the outside so he can still make the triple he jumps from this spot right here all the way to here and lands takes the outside and goes for the triple you can see a lot of riders are starting to use that inside 
That's slick right there. All those spots that are shiny are very slick. That's what the riders are talking about and having a tough time hooking up tonight. Sellout crowd here in Anaheim awaiting the gate to drop for our first semifinal. The charge is on. Larry Ward, number seven on the inside. But it is number 200 out in front. Pat Foster out of Bishop, California. Larry Ward quickly, though, taking him on for the lead as he looks over on the triple right next to him. They look right at each other. I think they enjoy that. I don't think they really, they know who they are. They know they're right next to each other, but it's just a, kind of a cool thing. It looks like Foster just went down. Terlicki moving into second place, and it's Jeff Emig in third. Remember the top five advancing to the main event. But Sean right now is in fifth. Nice little lead Ward already has. He can afford to go wide, jump the triple, pull off one tear off. A lot of the guys run three or four to begin with in case they need him. Then you get the whole shot. You can see a little bit better if you've only got one or two on him. Larry Ward coming off that dramatic win in his former hometown last week. Let's get out of Marty Reed. Yeah, guys, I talked to him right before the start of this series, and I said, what happened? I didn't see what happened to you on the start. He said, oh, I got hooked with the elbows, and then I ended up going down on the very first lap. So he said, I'm definitely going to be out front in this one because I can't afford I don't want to waste my time in the last chance. Ryan Terlicki is putting up a great battle with Jeff Emig for second place, number 40 on the Suzuki. And that's Emig, number 11, cutting through the whoops, getting in front of him. Emig making a good pass through the whoops. A lot of talk early this season. Look at wheelies just before that jump so you can get all that suspension, compression, and rebound. Jump over that entire, it's a jump and a big uh, sort of a pyramid than another jump. And that's the way Jeff has been doing it all day. He gets a lot more spring, but I think he, it looked to me like Art Emick had the whole shot about midway down the starting line, then he just sort of got passed on both sides. He hasn't been able to hold that lead all the way to the corner like he has before. Keith Foss, number 28, and back of Terlicki, and then that's Pichon, number five. He doesn't want to have to go to that last chance qualifier, that's for sure. Damon Huffman in second place had to go to the LCQ along with Emick in our first round here at Anaheim. That's where you really don't want to be, especially a rider Riders of that caliber don't see it very often, but they both made it out in no trouble at all. Michonne's starting to work his way up. The checkers coming out after our first semifinal round when we return. At a standstill, it might be compared to other sport bikes. At top end, it might be compared to other sport bikes. But at each and every mile per hour in between, comparisons become insignificant specs in the mirrors. The TL1000R, the only one of its kind on the track, from Suzuki. ESPN.com what I like about it is you can read about like pretty much every sport you know what I really wasn't interested in until I got online was um, horse racing and they had some stuff about you know the Breeders Cup and the Kentucky Derby I never thought about this but you know if I lost some weight you know got in better shape I might be able to be a jockey you know there's my professional dream right there I mean you know how hard can it be you pop on a horse and hit it with a stick you know Tortelli's got to get on the move here. If you look at the riders in front of him, you think he'd definitely be able to make his way in. Ward now with a five-second lead on Huffman in second place. The real battle is for third, fourth, and fifth. Look at Pichon. Just rockets out of that corner, jumps all the way into the whoops, makes up time, but then he doesn't have anywhere to go. He's trying to... Right side of that straightaway, left as we looked at it right there. You can see him come out and get a good drive, but still unable to find a way through. 
Those are the top five. If they stay that way, they'll they'll go to the main event out of this semifinal qualifying round. It's Kyle Lewis and Sebastian Tortelli. They're hoping to get up into that group. Number 273 on the Suzuki, Kyle Lewis getting some action before he goes over to the Nationals, uh, the National Circuit in Japan. He won that circuit last year. Here's Pichon, and Pichon getting in front of Turlecki, number 40. And so now it's Ward, Huffman, Boss, Pichon, and Turlecki, and right now Kyle Lewis and Tortelli are making a move on that final bubble spot. That's where it really gets interesting. If Pichon gets that good drive out of there, he can afford that little lead he had over the pack to go wide like that. I like how he's not following. He's taking a completely different line. Watch the drive he gets out of here. He's able to use the berm. If Voss were to make any kind of a mistake there, he'd have the drive to take advantage. These are the five riders that right now are in line, but anything could happen right now. Voss and Pichon still battling it out. Heath Voss from Fire Lake, Michigan. He's on the Honda. And it's a white flag lap. Final lap for Larry Ward. Pichon really working Boss over here, keeping him guessing. Crossing inside, outside. It's the only way you can pass. You either got to keep a lot of pressure on somebody and hope they mess up or try to create something the way he's doing, going inside and outside. Here he goes again to the outside. Larry Ward with a five-second lead on Huffman. He's in second place. Here comes Pichon on Boss. Boss, though, cutting off the lane. Well, what Boss is doing is interrupting Pichon's rhythm right there. As soon as he comes into the corner, he's prepared to square it. Boss just kind of takes his time so that Pichon can't cut right back underneath him. A real battle going on with Terlecki and Tortelli, and that is for the final transfer spot. Tortelli, number 44, and number 40 is Terlecki. It's the checkers five for Larry Ward. So it's Ward and Emig, number 11. And Pichon, along with Boss and Terlecki. We'll be back in a moment. Line up every ATV Honda has ever built, and they would stretch from our factory in Ohio to the deserts of California. But in 28 years, we've never built one like this. The first ATV with ESP, push-button electric shift program, full digital display, and the most powerful engine we've ever put in an ATV. The Honda Foreman ES. We've just added something new to a very long line. Virtually everyone who applies for this Visa credit card will be approved. If you meet these minimum requirements, you will be approved for this unsecured Visa credit card. This means you're not required to pay a security deposit to obtain your Visa credit card, even if you've been turned down before and regardless of your past credit history. Now you can be approved for the credit you need with no security deposit required. This is a limited time offer. Find out if you're among the thousands who will be approved for this no-risk unsecured Visa credit card. Call our toll-free number now. Francis and the Terps won the battle at Chapel Hill. Now, Okalaja and the Heels want a little payback. A crucial matchup in the ACC. North Carolina, Maryland, today at 4 on ESPN2. Here are the five riders coming out of the first semifinal round going to the main event. Larry Ward, Jeff Hemmig, Mikhail Pichon, Heath Voss, and Ryan Terlicki. Terlicki getting that final spot over Tortelli. And also Sebastian Waugh having to go to the last chance qualifier. Let's go down to Marty, who's with our winner. Yeah, we had just a brief moment right before the start of the race. I told him what you said is, you know, you got locked up in the first round in the heat race, and you weren't about to go to the LCQ. No, 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 no. I didn't even like riding that semi, but I learned something on the start, and hopefully I can get out of that gate real good again like I did in the semi in the main event. Track, uh, Track's tough. It's getting real slippery. The moisture's coming up, but... It's going to be the same for everybody. All right. Uh, no one can listen in. What'd you learn? Give us a little sneak peek. I just learned you uh, you got to get across that gate real good. <laughs> Otherwise, you get pinched off. And when you get down there, it gets real tight. So I got to really, really concentrate and get out of the gate like I did last week. Why is it I feel, guys, like he may not be telling me the whole story? We'll see you in the main. <laughs> Thanks, Marty. Congratulations to Larry Ward. Tonight's main event is the first of three Triple Crown events where the winner is in line for 250 grand. Pace Motorsports' Gary Becker explains. Uh, we've created three races here in Anaheim, Indianapolis, and Houston. 
Uh, you got to win all three races, win a quarter million dollars. We've seen our sport of Supercross evolve into mainstream sports rather than an enthusiast-only sport. And we're comparing ourselves to NASCAR. They've got the Winston Million. We created the uh, Triple Crown of Supercross. You know, David, even if no one wins all three, the high point rider out of those races wins an extra $25,000. And Ezra Lusk looking very determined right there. I don't think he's thinking about the money right now. No, I don't think so. He just wants to be in the main event, try to get through the first corner without having any problems. It really wasn't his fault the first time. He just was just unfortunate. And I hope that that little black cloud isn't going to start following Ezra around this year like it did last year because he's definitely capable of giving McGrath a run for this title. Jimmy Button also in this second semifinal round along with Pedro Gonzalez, Phil Lawrence, Damon Huffman. Ezra Lusk from Bainbridge, Georgia. You see the back of him there. Mike Gassler, his mechanic. 30 board is up and we're just about set for our second semifinal heat over their shoulders you can see how far it is that first corner it looks like button lined up just to the right of him there's Villeman David Villeman number 934 he's way over to the inside I, I would favor the inside the way this start is even if you don't get a great jump still get in there and come out in pretty good shape because everyone no matter what you're coming in with so much speed to that first corner everything's going to get pushed wide there's Phil Lawrence, Grayson Goodman. He's an outstanding starter. And we're set to go now for our second semifinal round. They're off and running. Let's see who can get the whole shot. Number 31 is Huffman. Huffman out in front. No one down. A clean first quarter. Billman is right in back of a Huffman. And it is a side-by-side -side rattle over that triple right now. Well, it's hard to get out of that first corner first and jump the double. This is what happened to Huffman. He couldn't do it. Now he sits in fourth. Top five riders get the transfer to the main event. The others risk the chance in that last chance qualifier. There's Lusk and Billiman. Getting all the way over. The, I don't know what the heck to call that thing. It's, it's a jump, a big jump, and another little one after it all. They jump the whole thing. It takes a lot of timing to get over it. Lusk coming off that berm. Great speed. Has this beautiful balance. He's got the bike parallel with the ground up in that berm. He's only one second behind our leader. As you see, the battle for second place as the Luskin Villeman out in front. Number 10, Jimmy Button. This is tough. That little double before the triple. Of course, it's just not business as usual over the triples this week. There was a quick look at DeCosta at the bottom left of our screen. Taking a look at that whoop section. That's where you'll see some passing tonight in the main event. I don't. I think everyone's going to be pretty much holding it tight. Trying to protect their line. There's only a couple places where you have opportunities to pass. So it's Button, Lusk, Villeman, Huffman, and Gonzalez, our top five. Here's the matchup with Huffman, number 31. Gonzalez behind him. Then we've got a lot of space behind Gonzalez. So let's take a break right now. We'll be back with more action from our second semifinal round when we return. At work, they call me Pete. On my Suzuki Intruder 1400, they call me Lone Wolf. Lone Wolf on the Savage 650. Lone Wolf. Lone Wolf. It's Ms. Lone Wolf to you, mister. You quit staring at my Marauder 800. There are so many Suzuki Cruisers to choose from. Everybody can be Lone Wolf. You still have your pay stubs from your college job? Why would they need that? You never know. <sighs> You're an awfully early this morning. Good morning. Countrywide Home Loans, we've put our branch managers in charge of the entire home loan process. Honey, I could sure use those statements. Still looking. We have no loan committee. Hi, it's Peter Mooney, just checking in again. Well, Peter, I think I have everything I need from you. Are you sure? If you want me to, I can just... So with people in every Countrywide branch with the power to say yes, we're very fast. So when do you think we'll hear? Uh, this week? Peter. It's okay, I don't want to rush the loan committee. Why don't we hear from them now? What? I am the loan committee. Really? Your loan is approved. Oh. 
That was quick. With rates so low, it's time to call Countrywide to refinance or buy your new home. Call 800-EASY-877 or ask your real estate agent about a branch near you. Countrywide. Easy. Really. Everybody, get ready. Okay. There's me. And there's my 4x4. I'm picking up some speed. Here I go. Up. Woo. Look at me move. And I look great doing it. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> look out, everybody. Here comes the coma man. You're the bomb, baby. The bomb. The man. Eh. So, what do you think? I am everyday people. Jimmy Button coming over the finish line jump right now. Two laps to go in this semifinal round with Ezra Lust right behind him and David Villeman in third. So it's become quite a distance between riders here in the second semifinal. I'm pretty sure Lust wants to get up and win the semi or at least close the door on Jimmy and prove how fast he is. Let Jimmy know, hey, you, you might win this thing, but I'm the faster of the two. And he seems to have been un unable to really close the gap. So I don't know if that was possibly just holding back a little bit or if Button's riding that well. But there's the lap time, 55 seconds. That's two seconds faster than it was in practice. Uh, Jimmy Button not only having to get used to that four-stroke, David, but he's had stitches in the middle finger of that clutch hand. And uh, that's been a problem uh, in recent races. Well, it's, it's probably starting to get healed a little bit more now. And it probably only bothers him early in the day or if he sits around for a long time but once you get this deep into a race it's not a problem all the adrenaline everything just takes over white flag is out for jimmy button and ezra lusk along with david villaman in third and it is huffman in fourth and still gonzalez in fifth villaman going wide in this corner that berm's starting to get torn up just a little bit and get down into loose stuff not, making a move around the lapper there. Yeah, he's not timing that whoop section like I thought he may. He's decided maybe that's not fast enough. Maybe I just got a blitz across there across the tops. And I think maybe Lusk heard me because he has closed the gap a little bit. Probably just the last lap and Button back it down a tad. Jimmy Button riding a flawless semifinal round here. And that's got to be encouraging to Team Yamaha. The checkered flag is waving for Jimmy Button. Lusk. Whoa! Villeman. Let's see what happens now. Just a routine cross of the finish line with Huffman. After some tremendous layouts by Lusk and Villeman. But here is our winner of the semifinal round. He'll be talking with Marty Reed when we come back. The Baseball City USA Spring Training Getaway. Now's your chance to see the Orioles in spring training. Grand prize is a three-day trip for two to Fort Lauderdale. You'll see Cal, Brady, and the O's take on ultimate slugger Mark McGuire and the cards. And you'll throw out the first ball. To enter, send a postcard with your name, address, and phone number to this address. Baseball City USA, the home of every Orioles fan. Channel 90 on Cablevision Loudon. Now the standard tier home of HTS. Hey, if you're a caravan buyer, you can either go from dealer to dealer and haggle and negotiate, or you can come here for the lowest possible price right from the start. And now on every caravan, we have a copy of the actual factory invoice. It's to the penny what we paid Chrysler. Pick out the one that you want at $15 and it's yours. No haggling, no negotiating, no nonsense. And on top of it, the factory sends you a $1,000 rebate. There's only one place in town. It's here, Templeton, Tyson's Corner. The seventh annual ESPY Awards are right around the corner. That means SportsCenter is showcasing the plays and players up for a 1999 ESPY Award. And what a year it was. Check out SportsCenter every night for a preview of the ESPYs and then hit ESPN.com for a full slate of the year's nominees. See how your picks stack up against ESPNs when the awards are televised February 15th. Watch SportsCenter and log on to ESPN.com. The ESPYs are coming. The ESPYs are coming. Pace Supercross is brought to you by Suzuki. Right now, your Suzuki dealer has a wide selection of fine motorcycles and ATVs and the financing to get them. 
Five more qualifiers to the main event after our second semifinal round. Jimmy Button on the four stroke. Ezra Lusk trying everything he could do to catch him. Just couldn't do it. David Villeman in third. His last race here in America before going back to the GP circuit. And Damon Huffman along with Pedro Gonzalez making it into the main event. Let's go down to Marty Reed who's on the podium. A very happy Jimmy Button down here, and the fans love this four-stroke. And they were talking about how you know, Doug Henry had a lot of miles on that bike, and you're getting more and more comfortable with it. Yeah, you know, uh, Doug did a lot of work, and, you know, unfortunately for him also, he didn't start out the season, you know, with a, with a ball of fire, but he, he finished it out like that. And, uh, every week I'm getting more adapted to it. We're testing, I mean, just, uh, you know, two days a week, 10 hours a day, we're testing, getting the bike better, more suited towards me. Finally starting to ride a little bit better, a little bit more control. Uh, it's easy at the practice track, but, you know, you get out in range conditions, and it's a little bit different. So uh, I my hats off to Bridgestone, Yamaha, all the guys at Fox. Uh, everyone that's helped me out. They've uh, really stuck behind me this year. Yamaha took a big gamble with me, and uh, hopefully Keith and all the boys are pretty happy. Quite a battle for the last two positions at the 20 rider gate coming out of the last chance qualifier because Sebastian Tortilli of Team Honda crashed while in fifth and had to fight Phil Lawrence and Grayson Goodman. Uh, it was a tremendous, tremendous battle for Sebastian Tortelli to finally qualify out of the last chance qualifier. He could not catch Kyle Lewis. So it's Lewis and Tortelli rounding out the 250 gate. Now a development during 125 qualifying sent the 125 points leader Casey Johnson to the hospital with a broken arm. It's once again a wide open run for the 125 West title. Nathan Ramsey might just be their favorite when we come back. Out of the shadows come three incredible motorcycles. Each one takes the look of a custom to a beautiful new place. The Honda Shadow Spirit 1100, the Shadow Ace Tourer, and the Shadow American Classic Edition. It's always cooler in the shadows. During custom finance days, get 9.9 .9 APR on new Shadow 1100s. Temperature's dropping pretty quick. It's now or never. Data rolling, we're locking on subject. Uh, we're losing them. Copy that. Stay on target. <laughs> this guy's nuts. Looks like we're gonna need a bigger mountain. People ask me all the time, how do you decide which anchors work together? And to be honest, it's an awkward process. Dear Larry, want to do the sports together? If yes, check this box. Charlie? Ultimately, you're looking for a good relationship. Um, if you're not doing anything later tonight, uh, would you want to do a show with me? Whoever said all's fair in love and war was probably a broadcaster. We'll be back with more Sports Center in just a moment. I don't even know who you are anymore. Welcome back to Anaheim, California. Art Ekman, David Bailey, and Marty Reed as the 125 riders, the future superstars of this sport, taking a parade lap right now. Missing is Casey Johnson. This is his teammate, Casey Lytle, second in the point standings. But an accident in qualifying sent his teammate, Casey Johnson, to the hospital, as we mentioned, with a broken arm. So it opens up things. It is a pure dogfight as we look at the Suzuki point standings. And Johnson had a 16-point lead on Lytle. But as you can see, it's going to be a real battle for the title now, David Bailey. Well, it sure is. You can see Johnson there with the 94. He's out. So now Nathan Ramsey, who had a horrible first round here with a broken chain, is in the hunt. Coming off two wins. There he is right there. Just finished his parade lap. Or actually, he's just going to do one more start. Line it up. And... He can get the whole shot. He's got the speed to run away with this thing. Looking at the starting grid, picking out your favorite. David Pingree looks strong in the uh, qualifying heat. Well, I was just uh, talking with somebody else. It seems like Pingree could probably pull off a great start here. He's a good starter, long starting line. He's got the top end. I believe if he gets off in the top three, he may be able to make a showing here. A little bit better than he has so far in the series. With his first two Supercross wins already in his hip pocket, Nathan Ramsey is truly having a breakthrough season for himself. 
Nathan Ramsey showed everyone he would be a force to be reckoned with in Phoenix. He got the whole shot and led every lap. I think it's still going through my veins right now. You know, it's like once you get, I don't know, once you get that first win, you know, the feeling, it's like, it's almost like a, a hazy dream kind of feeling. They have that feeling, and a feeling is just so good that they're never going to want to let it go. And he, sure enough, I said, well, how does it feel? I can't explain it. And I said, it's, it's awesome, isn't it? The Phoenix win seemed to open the floodgates. Win number two came while Nathan was just trying to play it smart. I feel like I learned a lot last year, and uh, this year I just came out with an attitude that, you know, I got to win, win races, and, and most of all, too, also be smart about it, you know, not do the things that I did in the past to, you know, fall over or cost myself a race or two. Pro Circuit team owner Mitch Payton, known for getting the most out of his young riders, took a little getting used to for Ramsey. When I first came on the team last year, we kind of butted heads a little bit, you know. I was real hard on Nathan, probably even a little too hard when I met him because I wanted to make sure that I thought he was doing what he needed to do and I didn't see it in the beginning and, and we finally just talked and I said, look, I'm done picking on you, you gotta just do it. Now, Mitch Payton has a budding young star on his hands. Nathan Ramsey with a great deal of confidence coming into this race, not because of the injury to Casey Johnson, Casey Johnson was already thinking of named Nathan Ramsey in the last couple of races. Lytle right there. The board is sideways. We're getting set now for the 125 main event from Anaheim, California. They're off. Let's check out that very tight first corner. In good position is Pingree, number 60. Lytle is right to his left. It is a dogfight already with 34. Ryan Huffman always a good starter in third. I had a feeling. Talking with our spotter, saying, I think Pingree is going to get a great start. He definitely is going to be in the top three, and he pulled the whole shot. But he's got Lytle right there. Boxes him out. Pingree, a smart rider. He's a veteran rider. Yeah, Beaker called that shot, that's for sure. Pingree, number one, in a battle with Casey Lytle. Lytle now sensing that he's got a great shot at winning this 125 Western title. Wow, look at Lytle jump all the way to that outside. Makes up a lot of time, but he has to go wide. He can't really capitalize on it. Pingree triples into the corner right there. A little bit nicer technique getting in. You can see the riders have a different rhythm over these doubles. Doesn't really seem to be any faster one way or the other. Just depends on how you start in. So it's Pingree, Lytle, and now Ramsey passing Isaiah Thompson for third. Here's the battle, Lytle. Coming back is Pingree on the inside, but Lytle has the edge going to the corner. That's the place where you see a lot of passing through the whoop section. Everywhere else, these guys seem pretty much, whoever holds that inside line doesn't make a mistake. Check it out, this battle right now. Casey Lytle, David Pingray, back and forth we go. Let's get out of Marty Reed for an observation. Well, I talked to the team right before the start of the race with Casey Johnson having his accent. I said, how is Casey Lytle's head? He says, hey, he's fine. He understands this is part of the business. It, obviously, it has had no effect negatively as far as getting into his head. He just made a wonderful triple the last time by to take the lead. Casey Lytle, David Pingree, Nathan Ramsey, bang, 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 with I.J. Johnson in fourth, just waiting for a mistake. Schnell is in fifth, with Brandis in sixth. Look at Ramsey jumping into that whoop section. He carries the, the front wheel one bump farther. It's all he needed to get by Pingree right there. 11 laps to go in our 15-lap main event, 125, from Anaheim, California. It's possible, too, Art, that Lytle could be just a, a tad shook up by what happened to his teammate earlier tonight. Probably wants to carry that flag for him, but, you know, it, when your fellow teammates get hurt like that, it, it bothers you a little bit. Here comes Ramsey! Nathan Ramsey, split fire, pro second. You know what sets that up is he approaches that whoop section a little bit faster. He goes in there with more momentum. Look, at he jumps that entire section, makes up a little bit more time. Ramsey. Watch. Had all kinds of problems at Anaheim here in the opening round. He crashed and then also uh, had the chain break and ended up in 18th position, but right now he's back in the points race. He's well, looking for his third consecutive win, David. That's, that's dominating. 
When you can string together wins like that, he's got so much confidence now. It's not like he got the whole shot. He had to work his way past everybody, and that just lets them know, well, there he's a little bit faster, and they're going to have to step it up a notch and try to stay with him. He's already got a little gap. Well, what a close freight train we have. Right behind our leader, who is starting to take a dominating lead, Lytle, Pingree, and Isaiah Johnson. There aren't many places on the racetrack where the guys are doing things that much different. You know, of course, they can make mistakes, so they can be a little bit off their timing, but that whoop section really seems to be the separator tonight. Nathan Ramsey, Ramsey came into this uh, matchup leading 19 laps previously on the season. Let's go down to Marty. Guys, we talk about the finding moments that make a career or make a season. Let's go back just two races when Nathan Ramsey almost lost that lead to Casey uh, Johnson. Remember, Johnson was closing, but Ramsey was able to hold on. And David, you can explain this better than any of us. You've been there. That moment, had Johnson gotten past him, maybe he wouldn't have won again the rest of the year. Yeah, that's, that's possible, Marty. It could have deflated him right there. But he was able to hold on. That tells you that you can do it. If you're in that situation again, it'll be a little bit easier. The guys on the team were telling me, you listen to Nathan talk, and it's not cockiness, it's not anything like that, but he felt like he was in everybody else's head right now. Like that last two victories that he notched on the board, he now knows he can beat all these guys. And he feels like he's in their heads instead of them being in his. With Nathan Ramsey pulling out in front in our 125 main event, we'll take a break before we get back to the finish of this race. Suzuki Fest 99, folks. Step right up. Pick a selected Suzuki Cruiser and pick out $400 in free accessories. How about you, sir? A Suzuki Intruder 800 and maybe a jacket? Or how about a Marauder 800 and helmet? It's up to you. There's lots to choose from. And choose from financing offers like zero down, low monthly payments, or low APR. But hurry in. Suzuki Fest 99 and soon. Hey, I don't make the rules. Suzuki Fest 99, folks. Have you outgrown your current position or find yourself unemployed? Then it's time to look in the National Business Employment Weekly. You'll find top jobs with top companies and advice on landing them. Order six issues of the National Business Employment Weekly now for only $19, a special introductory offer. Look in the National Business Employment Weekly. You'll never know what you'll find. To subscribe, call 800-238-3800. That's 800-238-3800. A great tradition reborn on ESPN2, Friday Night Fights. This week, it's a battle of the top light heavyweights. Telesco takes on Harding, plus a Floyd Patterson retrospective. Friday Night Fights, Friday at 9 on ESPN2. Welcome back. Here's our leader for the 125 main event as Art Ekman, David Bailey, and Marty Reed bringing you the action. And behind him, we've got Casey Lytle. And David Pingree. Lytle's been able to hold off Pingree as Pingree gets up on his tail. The battle for second is on. Well, Lytle didn't move around. Then uh, Pingree just didn't let him go. As long as you can stay with somebody, you know you still got a chance. If the way Ramsey blew by them all, they're not even thinking about him anymore. But they, they all know if they can stay close to Lytle, especially when they get into lapsed riders, this isn't over. Whoa, look at this. Isaiah Johnson now and Pingree going at it. Well, they just barely have any time to look over those mechanics. I don't even know if these guys are looking. I know there was a lot of times in my career where I knew what I needed to do and I didn't even have time to look over there. Isaiah out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. He's riding a Yamaha, but is truly a privateer. Taking a look at the leaderboard now. Ramsey, Lytle, Pingree, Johnson, Michael Brandis in fifth. Brandis has never been out of the top five this year. That's been a big difference than in seasons past. Very consistent. He's just behind these riders. Isaiah Johnson clipping the top of that platform. Trying to make a move on Pingree in that corner. He's got the good angle, makes the nice block pass, and Isaiah Johnson has moved into third. And this whoop section really creates a lot of, of opportunities to pass. Approaching through it and at the corner at the exit. The only place I've seen a lot of action here tonight. 
everywhere else, everyone's been pretty much able to take a, a good clean line, protect their line on the inside. As long as they don't make a mistake, they seem to be able to hang on. But that whoop section really seems to be the separator. And Ramsey is just blitzing through there just as fast as the 250s are going. Oh, he's got his confidence pumped up so high. And the professor, Mitch Payton, I'm sure is very proud of the way this guy's developed. I'll bet you he's got a great big smile under that helmet right now. I just have a feeling he knows even if he drops it, makes a little mistake, he's still got enough of a lead now. He's just savoring every lap. He has a six and a half second lead. And the flag man is not too sure who's in second place. He was given the blue flag to Isaiah Johnson because he's a triple digit rider. Let's check out the Honda stopwatch and get the interval more officially right now. Not six eight there. But Casey Lytle running through our picture. Now, Pingree has really started to fade. Brandis has moved up. Ramsey, Lytle, Johnson, Pingree. And Brandis moving in front of Pingree. Well, Brandis has really started to come on here late in this race. We'll get a lap time on Nathan Ramsey. See what he's running compared to the 250s. They went a little over a minute that first lap. Ramsey can stop for a Diet Coke and still get up and win. He's so far in, out in front of Lytle in second place, and Casey Johnson, or Isaiah Johnson, I should say, in third. Brandis and Pingree. Then it's Snell. Now he's sped up the pace a little bit, got it down to a minute. Jumps that whole section there after the mechanics. Look at Brandis. Pingree has gotten him back. These guys are going back and forth. Pingree moving up for fourth. Brandis hanging in there well. He's had three third place finishes, one fifth place, and that was in San Diego. And now he's back in fifth behind number 60, David Pingree. Not willing to stay there, however. I think these guys will probably ride a little bit more cautious towards each other. But that's the only way to get around out here tonight. Unless you get lucky, is you got to get in and put a block pass on somebody. Take a little bit of a chance of taking his front wheel out and putting him down. Oh, Brandis. Brandis let his bike fly. Well, the way that bike almost did the double by itself. I don't know if he's going to have much to ride for the rest of the race. Fixing the clutch lever. That's too bad. That's going to wreck his consistency. Especially third in points and right there knocking on the door on Casey Lytle and Nathan Ramsey right behind him. Take another look. A bad Just break. behind Pingree. Look at the bike all by itself right there. You see the bike, but there's no Michael Brandis on it. He's trying to do a sprint to catch up with it to restart it. Here's our leader, Nathan Ramsey, going over that same area that Michael Brandis had to get off. Look at Ramsey, look at the run. He gets into the swoop. He carries the front wheel over the first two. He gets kicked a little bit that time, but he still didn't seem to lose much momentum. Over this double, catches the downside through that mechanics area. I'm sure he'll like to see what's on the board. If Nathan Ramsey can hold on for his third consecutive victory here with the 125 West, he would have a four-point lead over the DNF, the former points leader, Casey Johnson. Lytle's got, still not out of the woods here. He's got Johnson still close enough to him, to keep the pressure on. That's not, that's hard to do. Get out of that corner right there. There's no run. He's able to jump the double right there. It's slick. White flag. Final lap underway. Casey Lytle trying to hold on with Isaiah Johnson about two clicks behind him. Here's Johnson in third. Well, he's going to be excited. Start makes a huge difference. I, I think what I saw in practice out there today and even talking with some of the riders after afterwards, they really like the layout here. But now as it's getting slicker, the guys are getting the track more 
dialed in, it seems to be getting more difficult to pass. So the start is going to be critical for that 250 main event coming up. It always is, but I think it's even more here tonight with this layout. Well, Nathan Ramsey has got a smile in his heart right now as the checkered flag is out and it waves it for Nathan Ramsey, his third consecutive victory. And so Nathan Ramsey, with 25 more points, he scored 75 points in the last three races to really make this a terrific points battle with Casey Lytle, who finished second here tonight. Casey, though, just two points ahead of Ramsey, and we'll check those points when we get back. It's the most powerful custom on the planet. Six cylinders. Six carbs. 1,520 cc's. Only one motorcycle in the world can cruise like this. The Valkyrie from Honda. During custom finance days, get 5.9 APR on new Valkyries. Everybody I know calls her the cow, even people I don't know. really saying something to think that we went through 15 New England winters. Yay! It's just an amazing vehicle. It's been a, a really good buddy. It's been a good friend. And heck, we just need another excuse for a party. Toyota trucks. How many miles can you put on? What sets some people apart gives them the confidence to succeed on their own terms. It's no secret, it's the Wall Street Journal. Now you can have that confidence delivered for 13 weeks at just $36.75, just 57 cents a day. That's a 25% savings off our regular rate, which makes now a great time to try this limited time offer. Call now, 800-248-1300. That's 800-248-1300 for the Wall Street Journal. Line up every ATV Honda has ever built, and they would stretch from our factory in Ohio to the deserts of California. But in 28 years, we've never built one like this. The first ATV with ESP, push-button electric shift program, full digital display, and the most powerful engine we've ever put in an ATV. The Honda Foreman ES. We've just added something new to a very long line. Here's our official results now as Nathan Ramsey taking his third consecutive 125 main event. Casey Lytle in second place holds on barely to the points lead. Isaiah Johnson will move up to fourth. Davey Pingree, his best performance of the year in Schnell, finishing up in fifth. And as we look through six through ten in the finishing department, let's go down to Marty. Well, it took a lifetime for him to win victory number one. Now he's done it three weeks in a row. Look at the smile. Man, I don't know what to say. You know, I just, uh, they said the first one's the hardest one, and I, I think, uh, you know, I, it, it put something in my head, and I don't, you know, I don't want anything but first. But uh, I'm going to try to be, you know, really smart about this thing. You know, Casey, it was unfortunate that he crashed earlier, Casey Johnson, and uh, got hurt. But, you know, my pro circuit Kawasaki is really going good. Bridgestone tires are hooking up, and uh, I couldn't be happier, you know. The guys were telling me back in your pit, you're now in everybody else's head. They're no longer in yours. Yeah, it's weird. You know, I've always been the type of guy just to go for it and just no matter what lap it is, what time it is in the race, you know, I go for it. But this year, I think, you know, with everybody telling me and telling me, you know, I just got a little smarter. And, uh, you know, I like to thank everybody for the help. Mazda, 1-800-COLLECT, everyone. Thanks a lot. Congratulations. Let's move over to second place now. Casey, come on in here. It didn't look like the injury to your teammate distracted you at all. How were you able to put it out? You know, I just just focused on the race tonight, and uh, I tried. I got in there, uh, started second, and uh, got past Pingree, started leading, and, uh, and Ramsey came by, and uh, it just it kind of kind of got a little nervous and started riding tight, but uh, I held in for second. You know, I'm really happy with second. I like to thank Troy uh, Troy Racing Yamaha. Just everybody's been helping me out. Oakley, Sinasalo, Alpine Star, and Stow. Are you gonna when you get back home tonight and think about this a little bit more? The, the pressure now of the team and, and the championship now falls squarely on your shoulders. Yeah, you know what? We have two weeks off uh, going going these next couple weeks before Houston. I'm going to go ahead and put my head down. I'm not going to let any of that get to me. I'm uh, train hard, and uh, I'm going to come back for Houston for a win. We'll see you next time out. All right, thanks a lot. 
Taking a look at the points for the 125 West now, Casey Lytle with 100 points is leading Nathan Ramsey just two behind him. And then Casey Johnson, even though the DNF and he probably won't be able to finish the season of the 125 West with a broken arm, he's holding on to third right now with Michael Brandis and Isaiah Johnson rounding out the top five. Larry Ward, last week's winner in the 250s, waits at the gate. Mike LaRocco is holding the points lead right now, but the hot guy on the track during qualifying was Jeremy McGrath. Ken McGrath here in Anaheim tonight regain the points lead. The 250s are coming up next. An heirloom quality clock beautifies any home, and Eastern Standard Time in Percival has a cozy collection to choose from. Floor clocks, wall clocks, mantles, cuckoos, and the unique. Complete servicing and restoration of heirloom quality or family keepsake clocks, even antique watches, is available. When your grandfather clock needs service, we make house calls in Loudoun County. When time is of the essence, visit Eastern Standard Time, 140 West 21st Street, across from Nichols Hardware in Percival. The Taxpayer Relief Act of 1997, the IRS Restructuring and Reform Act of 1998, the Tax and Trade Relief Extension of 1998. These and a host of other new tax provisions add up to the biggest change in tax laws in over a decade. Let Timothy J. Krieber, CPA, take the confusion out of the complexity and save you money in the process. Call today to hold the line on your bottom line. Ned Jarrett, Benny Parsons, Bill Weber, and Jerry Punch take you behind the scenes at Daytona. Tune in all weekend to ESPN, ESPN2, and ESPN News for all the flashes. And log on to ESPN.com for even more hot news. For analysis, interviews, and insight leading up to the start of NASCAR's 1999 Winston Cup season, keep your eyes peeled right here, where there's enough NASCAR action to fill the tank of any racing fan. Base Supercross, brought to you by Toyota Trucks, with you for the long haul. Welcome back to Anaheim, Edison International Field here in Anaheim, California. Art Ekman, David Bailey, Marty Reed as the 250 riders now taking their parade lap. There's the points leader, Mike LaRocco. LaRocco with good steady riding. As we take a look at the Suzuki point standings, you see there how close Jeremy McGrath is behind him. A battle for third between Team Honda teammates, Mikel Pichon and Ezra Lusk, with John Dowd getting his first podium last week, edging into that top five. Jeremy McGrath, with the flag waving, looked flawless in qualifying for the heat races, David Bailey. He was perfect. He's the guy that set the pace all day he got the whole shot pulled away in his heat race the fastest heat race by far so really what it comes down to here is can he get off the gate and get through the first corner clean if he can do that i don't see anybody out here that can beat him the but suzuki starting grid right now as you see some of the other riders that made the 20 rider field it was a real battle in the last chance qualifier for tortelli to finally make the field well even after going down he still managed to do what it took to get it done as we take a look, it's ironic when so many non-factory teams are concentrating on the 125s these days that uh, we have the two top riders battling for the 250 crown coming from independent teams. Mike LaRocco, Jack in the Box, Factory Connection Honda, and Jeremy McGrath of Mazda Chaparral Yamaha. And it's the independent teams such as Chaparral that are bringing in outside sponsors, which I think is a big key to the sport's future. We want to see all racing really become privateer teams. I think the factory's responsibility should be to offer motorcycles and technology to the teams, but the factories themselves should not be racing the motorcycles. Dave Dameron credits Phil Alderton of Yamaha of Troy and Pro Circuit's Mitch Payton with pioneering the independent team concept. And he certainly credits the signing of Jeremy McGrath for Chaparral's successful effort. When we made the deal with Jeremy, it just... It, we went skyrocket. I mean, it just took off. Uh, Jeremy is an icon in the industry. I mean, everyone knows him. Uh, Chaparral has been a large retail mail order facility as well as a large dealer. The combination of the two of them together really helped rocket the whole thing. 
With a support deal from Team Yamaha, technically there's little difference from being on a factory team. But for Jeremy, it means personal freedom. Chaparral uses Yamaha bikes, and Yamaha works on the bikes. Randy works at Yamaha and Chaparral, kind of split in between. And, and uh, I get the same treatment that John Dowd and Jimmy Button get right now. So it's uh, basically the same, but I just don't have all the rules. <laughs> I think by not forcing him to run the outdoor Supercross program, we've extended his career by at least one to two years because he feels that he can take the time off in the summertime. He's earned it. Just last night, Jeremy and his teammate Steve Lampson signed autographs for close to 3,000 fans at the Chaparral store. For Lammy, an independent team job was a savior. It's good for me, you know, because I've been, I've been around for a while. I've done uh, you know, a lot of races, and things didn't work out for me the last couple of years. So, I mean, if it wasn't for, you know, the independent teams and, and actually Chaparral having that, that opening there, it would be, uh, be pretty tough for me right now. Chaparral has also proved that having a race team is good for business. Our fiscal year ended October 31st. So for our October 31st business year, we were up 26% last year. Uh, first two months, actually December, is a very good. We've done an addition to our store. We've almost doubled the size of our store. And December of this, I mean, December of 98, we were up 36% over December of last year. So what we'd have to say is uh, the motorcycle business is very strong. Uh, Jeremy and the race program has obviously helped uh, bring attention to us. There's no doubt about that. Did you ever believe the two independent teams, David, as we take a look at Mike LaRocco, would be leading in points? Never would have thought that. But, uh, I mean, I was really impressed with the way McGrath put his effort together last year, although that is a factory Yamaha that he's riding. And uh, this year, what LaRocco has is a little bit better equipment than he had last year, too. So that's definitely helped those guys get up into those spots. And LaRocco, as we look at Raynard right here, is lined up pretty far to the inside. He, he tends to do that, and tonight, if he gets out of the gate a little better, which he's been doing the past couple of weeks, uh, he's sitting in a great position in that first corner to get a good start. He was the only other guy I saw riding uh, in certain spots on the racetrack as fast as McGrath. Okay, before they put the 30-second board up, let's go down to Marty Reed quickly. Ricky Carmichael is scheduled to return for Team Kawasaki next week. We had a scare earlier today. We heard that he was practicing. He went down. He did. The word was he fractured his arm. That turned out not to be the case. He will be racing next week at Tampa. Team Green got a big break there. Okay, the first round of the $250,000 Supercross Triple Crown is about to begin here in Anaheim. These guys are nervous right now. I don't care what they say, the money makes a difference. It does. And I, there's something about this stadium, too. I don't care that they took out a whole section of seats, remodeled it, it doesn't matter. This is, this is where you want to win. This has been the site of the final round of the season, and traditionally, it's been the site of the opening round of the season. This year is the first time, as Albertine there with the helmet cam on during this race, but this is the first year that we've come twice to Anaheim. The opening round, and now round number five. There you see what Albertine sees. Taking a look at Ward. He knows he just needs a good start. And it's sideways. The game will drop any moment now. And the first round of the Triple Crown is underway. Getting the big break was Ezra Lusk, number four. Ezra Lusk and Mikel Pichon, Jimmy Button in second. Raynard in fourth with McGrath in fifth. McGrath is in good position. Well, you can see that's close quarters there. 30 feet up in the air. Right behind LaRocco. Albertine starts into the whoops. What an amazing shot. To go over that triple on the first lap and all those, all that traffic. McGrath already works his way around Button. So good at picking riders off in this first lap. Not going to be as easy to get around Lusk and Pichon, though. Ezra Lusk is our leader. Team Honda, he won the first two races of the year. Had double digits the next two races. Mikel Pichon is right behind him. And then it's Jeremy McGrath, number one. Jimmy Button, number 10. Mike LaRocco, number three. Larry Ward, number seven. And number 17, Robbie Raynard. As we go back to Albertine, who's behind number 44, Sebastian Tortelli. Did they come over that little double, approaching the triple? 
Look at that airtime. Tearaway goes flying. Torcelli trying to break in front of Rainer. You can see the battle right in front of Albertine. McGrath has just moved into second. McGrath in a battle with Pichon is in second place. And the rivalry is on. Ezra Lusk in the lead. Jeremy McGrath in second place. McGrath wants that points lead back again. I was about to say, Art, that Lusk and Pichon had a great opportunity to go 1-2 again here in Anaheim. But McGrath just spoiled that. And as, you, as they say, it is on. These two out in front and proved to be the fastest riders. As we're looking for a battle for third, Mikel Pichon and Jimmy Button coming up on the four stroke. But now there's only one tick between Ezra Lusk and Jeremy McGrath as they go through the triple. All the riders going wide to get a good run at the loop section. Morocco in pretty good position. There you see him just behind Button. Morocco just gets stronger and stronger. The question is, where can he pass? Jimmy Button, who looks so strong in the qualifying, getting around Pichon. Jimmy Button with a four stroke. Now moves into third. He's not that far behind second place. And Pichon gets him right back. Pichon right back again. What a great battle this is. Morocco sitting right behind these two. They're taking up all the good lines. McGrath has gotten close to, to uh, Lusk a couple of times. Very close. Lusk has been able to open it back up. It'll be interesting to see now if Rusk gets rattled at all with the sports icon right behind him. These guys are... It's, it's a real fight between these two. And it's definitely for the ego right now to prove who's got the stronger head. McGrath thinks he does. Watch Lusk right here. He goes to the inside. He still jumps that triple. McGrath gets a much better run from the outside. It's smart for, for Lusk to practice jumping that triple. I saw him do it a couple times in practice. Button. Button just leaped over. Mikel Pichon back and forth for third place. It is so difficult to get out of that corner on the inside and still make that triple. Button's got a little bit more power than Lusk. Made that a little easier for him. Jimmy Button in third, Pichon in fourth, with Mike Morocco in fifth, and Ward in oh. sixth. Button doing a little nosedive, approaching the triple. That stuff doesn't seem to bother him. Some guys make a mistake like that, and it rattles him for a couple of corners. Button just keeps right on rolling. Whoa, there's another one. Seemed like he even made up time. These three riders are losing time now. You'll see the other guys going the other way. Lusk and McGrath, they got that whole whoop section now. Lead, McGrath has really tightened the screws. Here's LaRocco approaching Pichon. The jack of the box, factory connection, Honda. The points leader trying to pass Team Honda's Mikel Pichon. Button now is running a lonely third, but McGrath is still not far from Ezra Lusk out front. Pichon's mechanic, Danny Bentley, looks pretty calm. Bentley a calm sort all the time, except after Stanton took the championship in 1992. Yeah, he made all kinds of noise. That's the only time I've ever seen him go bananas. Mm -hmm. We're seeing right now the battle between Mikel Pichon and Mike LaRocco, and we'll be returning for the finish of round number five from Anaheim, California, after these words. Suzuki has completely restyled the Katana 600 and 750 from their dual halogen headlights to their four into one stainless steel exhausts. Same time tomorrow? Yeah. So now they're just as impressive on the outside as they've always been on the inside.
Golf Digest presents 50 ways to lower your score. To get greater distance, turn your right foot out. For a better backswing, don't slide. Turn your hips instead. Now, lower your score, drive longer, hit straighter, and play your best golf ever with the 50 new stroke-saving tips in every Golf Digest. Call now for your risk-free trial issue. If you like it, get 11 more issues, 12 in all, for just $19.97. Plus, get this stroke-saving video free. Call 800-417-1200. Big Fights Boxing Hour gives you access to the largest boxing library in the world. Sit ringside for the best fights in history by calling 1-800-CLASSIC to get ESPN Classic. Here's what you can check out in this library. Rare footage of classic fighters, hard-hitting fights you can't see anywhere else, and volumes of the greatest action in boxing history. But to see Big Fights Boxing Hour, you've got to get ESPN Classic. Call 1-800-CLASSIC today. Lots of racing left here in our main event for the 250s as there's Jeremy McGrath in second place. McGrath actually lost some time at last lap. Lusk. He's five seconds back. Yeah, Lusk really turned it up that time. Possibly McGrath made a few mistakes here and there. Regardless, Lusk pulled away, and he's still able to jump that triple from the inside. Now, McGrath will not be able to pass him through that corner. That's where there's some, some passes taking place. Unless Lusk gets sideways there and can't do the triple. As for Lusk, over the finish line, jump. 13 laps to go in our main event. I, I know McGrath's riding as hard as he can. He doesn't want to let Lusk get away. He's four seconds down in second place, Button in third. But show to Morocco the order. Uh, McGrath's game plan really has been ride smart, consistent, and let Lusk go out there and make the mistakes that he's made in years past. I don't think that Lusk will make them unless. Uh, McGrath can get up there and keep the pressure on him. Looks like LaRocco finally is able to get a look at Larry Ward now also. Starting to put the pressure on Pichon. Let's check in with Mar Marty Reed. Well, one streak is on the line. If Mike LaRocco cannot pick up one more spot, Mr. Podium would may miss the podium for the first time this season in five races. If he cannot pick up about another four and a half to five seconds and catch Jimmy Button. Emig fans, he went down, but he's back in the pack. As Ezra Lusk is pulling a big lead now on Jeremy McGrath. You know, back in 1981, Ken Howardson became the first rider to win back-to-back -back appearances here at Anaheim, and he would be the last to do so until Jeremy McGrath. Only two riders in 24 years have won back-to-back -back appearances here at Anaheim. Number four has that chance. Let's see if we can get Marty to work his way over and get the story on McGrath. He just went by the mechanics area and held his hand up like there may have been a problem. But he has definitely dropped off the pace. Lusk is gone now. McGrath is risking losing second place to Jimmy Button. Button is only one and a half seconds behind Jeremy McGrath. Here's Jimmy Button. That's got to be encouraging to Button. There you see. Former teammates last year on Team Chaparral. Well, I think McGrath has got a problem. There's no way he would just drop off the pace that fast. There's only one lap, and Button is right on it. Let's see what happens when he goes to the mechanics area again. 11 laps to go in our main event. Everything still looks fine. Let's see if Barty's checked it out yet. Barty. Yeah, guys, I talked to Randy Lawrence, and he does not know exactly what's wrong, but he agrees with you, David Bailey. He says there's something wrong with the bike. Jimmy Button comes up on the rear. Of Jeremy McGrath, McGrath holding tight. I would love to be able to go that fast with something wrong with my bike, wouldn't you, Art? <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. McGrath holding on at the halfway point now. Well, right here, it's just points. Think points. Go ahead and give Ezra the win. It's his, it seems to be his night, but try to limit the damage. Only lose three points, not five. He'll do everything he can to hold Button back there. 
Let's go back down track side. Hey, David, guys, we can't forget about one thing. It's not just points. It's $250,000. If you don't win this one, you don't stand a chance at the Triple Crown. In 19 races prior here at Anaheim, there have been very few moldable winners. Jeremy McGrath is the winningest rider here at Anaheim with four. Here's Button giving the challenge to Jeremy McGrath. Jimmy Button moving into second place. Took his time, was very patient, David Bailey. That was a, a fine move by Button to get up to the inside of McGrath right there and then just be able to hold on because McGrath did exactly the right move to try to cut right back underneath him. He'd already done it once before, but Button is having a great night. An 11-second lead for Ezra Lusk over Jimmy Button in second place with less than nine laps to go. Let's check it out officially on the Honda stopwatch. You know, I had a, a, just a quick chat with Stanton in the pits today, and Ezra walked up, and he had the most serious face I think I've ever seen. Very focused. Right now, I can see why. Look at that time click away on the Honda stopwatch. Morocco just going by. He had a pretty decent start, but he just wasn't able to hang with those guys. It's possible that he could catch McGrath if McGrath is, in fact, having a problem. In recapping, it's Lusk, Button, McGrath, LaRocco, Pichon, Ward, Lampson, Huffman, Tortelli, Villeman, Robbie Raynard, and the leading privateer, Tim Ferry. As they're coming around to complete a lap, He knows all he's got to do is just ride consistent laps, not make any major mistakes. Not he's back off too much. 57 seconds. Oh, beautiful. That's really all he needs to do. He's the winning to... average of Ezra Lusk here in round one at Anaheim was 59-1. But that was for the entire race. Sure. Completely different layout. It's amazing to me that every week the track is completely different. They still run right around within about two, three seconds of each other, all the tracks. I was going to say that Des Lusk is on the way of uh, winning his second race here in Anaheim as we take a look at Larry Ward. Ward's still looking very smooth. And he's in fourth. And McGrath hasn't totally given up on second place. He's still all over Button. By correction, he's in fifth behind LaRocco. Ward's got quite a bit of ground to make up to have a shot at LaRocco. Getting back to what I was trying to say was this could be Lusk's second win here at Anaheim. We haven't had very many multiple uh, winners. And Jimmy Button now is being challenged once again by Jeremy McGrath. I'll get that thought out sometime. Randy Lawrence, McGrath's mechanic. Trying to get him to focus. He knows Jeremy's got the strength. Look at Jeremy's line there. He jumps all the way up over the play tabletop, into the corner, over the triple. He's got to go wide to do it, though, and I thought that was the best line until I saw Jimmy Button come along and do all that from the inside. Six laps left to go. Lapping Heath Boss. McGrath has definitely turned the tables now and put all the pressure right back on Jimmy. Jimmy Button having trouble there with Heath Boss. Giving a break for Jeremy McGrath. Yeah, I can't figure out why Jeremy was holding his arm. Oh, Jimmy Button makes a mistake. And Jeremy McGrath regains the position as he moves into second place. And he just pulls that tear off real nice and casual, like, yeah, now I can see better, too. <laughs> You're not getting me back again. Yeah. Take another look at it, David Bailey, as Button certainly did have his problems. Watch Button. He jumps into the whoops. He jumps a little bit too far, sticks that front wheel right into a whoop, and it messes up his rhythm. Jeremy just floats by, touching the top. He was, looked like he was trying to lope through it where Jeremy was up on top. Well, that's, that's the risk you run of jumping in. If you jump in just right, the timing's perfect. It's a little bit faster, but there he jumped in a little too, only a foot. That, that caused him to lose second place. Here's our leader, Ezra Lusk. Boy, what an interesting season he has had. That's for sure. Jimmy Button's coming back now on Jeremy McGrath. Button to the inside. McGrath. All kinds of courage holding on on a bar-to-bar -bar competition with Jimmy Button. 
Hey, it just looks like these guys are having fun now. It's like a, just a Wednesday out at the Yamaha test track, and I think there's a lot at stake here. Button coming Whoa. right back. Being a little kind to Jeremy right there. Yeah, he could have made that ugly. Jeremy sure appreciated the fact that he was getting in there and being aggressive, but didn't put him up over the berms. He sure could have. So, McGrath knows that Lusk has had his problems a 16th and an 11th in the past two rounds. Hasn't helped him in the points. So he doesn't have to win this race. All he's got to do is stay ahead of LaRocco. And with four laps to go, it's Ezra Lusk with a 13-second lead on Jeremy McGrath. McGrath's teammate Steve Lampson just went off the track, got the riders all excited. Let's go to Marty. Down here with Mike Gosler. The last two weeks, he couldn't find the finish line. All of a sudden, he owns it. Yeah, I think he just changed the training routine a little bit. He's just riding real confident. He's smooth. Everything's working really good. We made some changes on the bike this week, and they seem to be working. And you look a little happier. Yeah, I'm happy right now. <laughs> Big smile on Mike Gosler's face, guys. <laughs> well, Ezra Lesk uh, winning the first, the opener right here. He won his heat. He looked very strong. He led 13 laps in that first race. Came back with a, a win in the second race. Leading only seven laps, but two in a row, and now he's looking for his third on the season. Yeah, and with Houston being the, the next round of this triple crown, Lusk won Houston last year, so he's looking pretty good for that. Good observation. The rider that wins the three triple crown rounds pockets $250,000. How come they didn't have that when I was racing? That might have been just what I needed. They knew you'd win it. <laughs> David Bailey, one of the double multiple winners right here at Anaheim. McGrath still flying that flag. Not quite fast enough, but smart. The main thing is having that number one plate on his bike, and this is all over with. He doesn't have to beat Lusk tonight to do it. Here's the helmet cam as McGrath comes around and laps Albertine. Looking right down at Jeremy McGrath as they go into the corner. You can tell where they put their eyes, can't you? Yep. Wherever Albertine's looking is what we're getting a shot of. You see how close he got to McGrath as they enter that whoop section where their lines cross. These guys get close like that, but they all understand what each other are doing out there. Lusk, McGrath, Button, LaRocco, the top four with Ward in fifth, Huff, Huffman in sixth. Villeman and Tortelli, the two Frenchmen, in seventh and eighth. I love the way McGrath goes around that corner. He just sits actually kind of on the back of the seat, which normally you wouldn't want to do. You want to slide forward. White flag is out. Final lap for Ezra Lusk. He's looking to become the winningest, the second winningest active rider in Supercross. This would be his ninth career victory. Well, he didn't set the world on fire in his heat race, and I didn't really notice him putting in that many hard laps in practice, but the guy's got the speed when it counts. Ezra Lusk looking very smooth on the final lap. Well, this puts things back the way he'd like to have them. Putting on the show. It's hard to do any kind of styling over that triple. These guys don't get much of a run at it. They get a lot of airtime. It's straight up. Especially after getting slicker earlier in the evening. The checkers are out. The checkers are waving. Ezra Lusk, his third victory of the season, his ninth career victory. McGrath with a smart second. McGrath picking up some points on McGrath, or I should say on LaRocco, as Jimmy Button takes third. McGrath showing good sportsmanship, rides by Lusk, pats him on the back. LaRocco just coming over the finish line in fourth. And it looks like Larry Ward in fifth, and Huffman uh, maybe taking the sixth spot. We'll have to check the official standings. But Jeremy McGrath doing a great job just playing it cool. We'll total up the points and hear from our winner when we return. It's the moment.
most powerful custom on the planet. Six cylinders. Six carbs. 1,520 cc's. Only one motorcycle in the world can cruise like this. The Valkyrie from Honda. During custom finance days, get 5.9 APR on new Valkyries. If you need a Visa credit card, we have a special offer just for you. We guarantee to give you a credit card with no security deposit required, regardless of your past credit history. Almost everyone will be approved for a Visa card, even if you've been turned down before. If you meet our minimum requirements, your approval is guaranteed. Our offer is for an unsecured credit card. This means that you're not required to send in a security deposit. Don't miss this limited offer to obtain a Visa card with no security deposit. Call our number now. An application will be sent to you immediately. The 1999 ESPY Awards with host Samuel L. Jackson. Performances by Big Bad Voodoo Daddy and Fastball. It's the greatest night in sports. The 1999 ESPY Awards, live Monday at 7.30 on ESPN. Pace Supercross has been brought to you by Suzuki. Right now, your Suzuki dealer has a wide selection of fine motorcycles and ATVs and the financing to get them. And by Honda Motorcycles. Cruise in and get great financing on Honda Customs. Here we take a look at the official results now. Ezra Lusk got the whole shot. The whole shot money, $1,000. But more importantly, it puts him in line for $250,000 as the first round of the Triple Crown, a winner. Jeremy McGrath, smartly riding for second place, regains the points lead. Jimmy Button, LaRocco Ward, Huffman, Villeman, Tortelli, Pichon, and Ferry are top ten. Let's go down to Marty Reed, who's with our happy winner. <laughs> I, uh, first question in my mind was, were you thinking about that $250,000 possibility anywhere out there? Oh, no. I was, uh, you know, last two weeks, I've really been focused on that hard and uh, like I really wanted to. Come off a little bit of injury at San Diego, you know, helped me back in some of my practices during the week. And tonight, I felt really, really good. I didn't feel rusty at all. And, man, I just, I was just thinking about number one behind me and being perfect because I know how good he is. Did you make any mistakes out there? Because every time you came by me, you were clean. Man, I, I tell you what, I just I rode a perfect race. I was able to go back home last week and practice with one of my old practice buddies back home in Florida, and uh, we had a blast. We were pushing each other like no tomorrow, and uh, I just I rode a perfect race, and I felt really, really good. Dunlop, Honda, and Fox, those guys gave me an awesome bike, and uh, Edney's shoes and Scott goggles. Well, congratulations, and uh, keep thinking about Houston, because I know we will. <laughs> Let's move over to second place. Um, we talked with Randy. He thought, David Bailey thought, that there was a problem with the bike. Was there? Well, I, I caught right up to Ezra. I got behind him, and, and uh, all of a sudden, I started feeling a little bit of a vibration. Um, it was a little bit unfortunate there. I, I felt something vibrating. I thought it might have been the wheels. I, You know, the, coming the spokes coming loose or something. The track's so hard out there, it's tough on the bikes, you know? The jumps are long, the whoops are, the whoops are hard, and, and it's rough on the bikes. So. I don't know, we'll have to go back and see, but I put it on conservative mode as soon as I felt that. You know, it kind of gradually got a little bit worse, and then towards the middle end, I, it started staying the same. So I figured I could pick it back up to a good conservative pace, and, and uh, actually, I'm, I'm fortunate. For the third time in three weeks, there's a change in the points lead. Guess who has it now? Well, hopefully me. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm happy about that. Um, my uh, Mazda Chevrolet Yamaha is running good, and uh, we got 800 collect. No fear gear now. Spy goggles. Um, re revenge, drinks, and uh, you know we got everyone out there. Everyone's doing a great job. And you got so many sponsors to take another hour for us to get them all in there. So we we better send it back upstairs. Good ride. Thanks a lot. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Marty Reed. Jeremy McGrath, as we take a look at the Suzuki point standings, has a one-point lead over Mike LaRocco in our quick uh, figuring here up in the booth. Now, Ezra Lusk, with his win here tonight, moves into third with 90 points. That's 11 points behind the winner, Jeremy McGrath, or I should say the leader, Jeremy McGrath, in the point situation. And the points race just simply tightens up for round six in Tampa. That'll be our next show here on ESPN2, Sunday, February 21st, 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Art Ekman for David Bailey, Marty Reed saying thank you for being with us. This has been an ESPN presentation, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on ESPN.com, part of GoNet, Go.com.
Okay, let me, let's do this. I'm going to reel this up. I'm going to do this right. I'm going to reel this up, set everything inside. I tell you, that was worth the trip. Oh. If there's one thing I could do that's a, that's a and really enjoy, and that's spend time with my family doing things like this, being outdoors and uh, spending a little quality time on a piece of water somewhere. I mean, close as you can get. I mean, zoom with, the, with your hand. This is close. This is close. All right, okay. Thanks. Flake man, I will not forget that one. I won't either. I, I was a witness. The cool thing about it was, as we came around the corner, you and Mern both said, get ready. Yeah. No, I, I this know. Looks, yeah. this looks fishy. Kevin Windham's first podium of the year in Supercross takes the Cajun kid all the way to the top in Tampa, nipping Jeremy McGrath and Ezra Lusk in the closest race of the year. The opening 125 battle of the Eastern Supercross season produces a fine how-do-you-do as South American teenager Ernesto...